Welcome back. If you were tuned in last week, we removed this crusty cow from this turdbag Mustang Mach 1. This week, we're going to be putting in a new cow, painting it with some street rod black, and somehow our broke asses came up with some money to get a spot welder. Tune in this week and see how we get it done. So we have the lower cow welded into the Mach 1, and I'm going to show you how I did it. Alright, so I failed to record the footage for this, but it's very easy. If you've gotten to this point, this is not the hard part. So I can, I'm showing you here where I put my plug welds in, and to get to this point, you had to have watched part 1. You tear the old cow out, drill out the spot welds. Now I have clamped this thing down with about 50 clamps, used some machine screws that were self-tapping to hold itself in place, and then I went to plug welding. I drilled in some quarter inch um, spots on the cowl, and then when I found that I reached the lip of the firewall, I stopped and then filled it with weld, and that's how you do it. This is what she looks like in there. It's not completely finished off, but I had to finish the welds at least to where they weren't proud anymore so we can put the top section on there what I had to do was get the best I could get out of these holes here see how they kind of overlap a little right in there it's not perfect it's close this side looks a little better but the key thing is is to get it where you can get that bolt through the bolt's not that thick. I believe this is it here. And that's plenty of room to hold your support on there. Okay, now the key takeaway here is getting your upper piece welded to the upper piece and getting these holes to line up with these holes. Okay, moving forward putting this cowl, upper cowl, onto the lower cowl, what we're going to do is weld through primer to the edge, okay? All right, and this gets welded, this beam, beam, this section here gets welded to this, all right? So we're going to buzz that down and weld through primer that. All right, so here's the weld through primer. See, it's gray. Got it. All those areas. And we'll hit the back side of this. So now I'm gonna scuff down all the places where the two panels are gonna be welded together. This is the upper cowl welding it to the lower cowl and I am going to hit it all with one of these roll-off wheels. It's basically a Scotch-Brite on a little electric drill here. This is a snap-on. I bought it used from a pawn shop. Didn't pay nearly what one cost new. Wouldn't recommend buying one new. Although it is a good tool, it's just too expensive. You can get one of these, probably Harbor Freight, Bowers, something like that. But something cool to note is even on here, how you have a little bit of kind of proudness, peep shavings from these, uh, where I put the sheet metal screws to put this thing together. You can get hit that with this. There you go. Just like that. Just trying to scuff it up, give the paint something to stick to.
what you're seeing here is the 320 grit sandpaper scratches on the inside of the cowl. I scuffed it down so our street rod black would have something to stick to. As you can see, I've got a tack cloth sitting on the apron there. After I vacuum out the inside of the cowl and get the dust out, not blow it out with an air compressor, but suck it out with a vacuum. Then I'll blow it with an air compressor into the tack cloth. That way I don't get any more dust in my garage than I need to. I also prep the outside of the upper cow. We're going to be spraying it with street rod black. Now you won't see any footage of me spraying the color in the garage because it's going to get all over my camera and if you want to see any more videos, you're just going to have to live with not seeing that paint come out of that gun. The masking tape all around the edges of this cow is to protect our weld through primer that we've sprayed on there. The weld through primer is what you spray in between where two panels bond together. This is about the only protection you can have from rust in seams. The seam sealer keeps the water out, but if you trapped moisture inside with no protection, i.e. no weld through primer, you're going to have problems down the road. Tech tip, Tech tip of the of week. The Okay, this may seem like a no-brainer, but it's not for some. Clean your area up. Have a clean working area. This ain't like spick and span, but this is clean enough to work in. I have a mix cup. About to open my tack rag and let it kind of fold out. Get some of the ultra sticky off of there. Have just a little bit of sticky. Okay, gonna have some strainers. We're going to be spraying this street rod black. No endorsement, but uh, it is pretty good stuff. It's a local company here. It may be nationwide. I just may not know it, but it's uh, Albert Kimberly Street Rod Black. And what you want to do is, after you scuff down your panel, I scuffed these with 320. That's more than plenty to get something to stick to it. You want to wipe it down with some kind of uh, prep oil. Either that Bulldog stuff or the clean brand with the K, whatever you got to use. Aircraft, there's many brands, but a Prepsol, it's a wax and grease remover. It'll get any of the oils off your fingers on it. Wipe that down, blow it off with your air hose, you know, or put a fan on it or just let it air dry for a good couple minutes. I always do it. Walk over here. Mix my paint up, get my gun ready, get my mask on, then walk over there and tack rag my area and then hit it. I've tried to spray it, uh, any type of paint product, immediately after hitting that stuff. Even though it looked dry and I had um, like a chemical reaction where it's almost like you had oil or something on the surface and then it fried up and it looks nasty looking. Uh, it's not like an orange peel look. It's something different. It's not a good look. It's not good. You don't want that. Let it dry. Give it a few minutes, then come back. Okay, I am not going to be videotaping the footage of me spraying, not because I lack the confidence in my spraying ability, but if you're spraying in an enclosed area and you're trying to ventilate it even a little bit, like my garage here, um, whatever the paint can get on, it's going to get on it. You may not see it at first, but if you've got another car even outside in the driveway and the door's cracked, it's going to mist out there. Don't ask me how. It just happens. Somehow, it's the law. It's like when you're working on something and you go put your tools away, you've just guaranteed yourself that you're going to need those tools again. So cover your stuff up, anything you don't want to get painted, uh, you can mitigate a lot of it, but, you know, covering things and stuff like that. But I'm not getting it on this camera. There's actually a whole bunch of little burn marks on the lens from where I was doing the grinding on the cow. And I don't need to destroy it any more than it is because, well, COVID put me jobless and I can't afford another GoPro right now. So we got to save that puppy. But uh, here we go, man. We're going to strain this. It's three to one. You're allowed a 10% reducer. What a urethane grade. This is Transtar. This stuff typically sucks, but for doing this little small piece, 
and it's just reducer, I don't see it being that big a deal. The rule of thumb is you typically don't want to mix different brands of paint products, but people do it all the time. Uh, you know, unless you've got a full professional booth with a full line of PPG or, you know, whatever you're using, Sandox or whatever, just, uh, you know, home project here. Still going to be nice though. Check it out. Products that don't suck. Okay, I want to shed some light on something here. The Omnifill Enamel Blend Paint, which is, according to National Parts Depot, the only concourse approved power steering pump colored paint for power steering pumps for your Mustang. Just wanted to show you what it can look like. Oh, look at that. It's kind of a metallic green blue color. Very cool. It's done a nice job of refinishing this here. I tell you what, that was short and sweet. That that disturbing image is burned into your mind. Let's see how the paint turned out. It's glossy now, but it dries a matte finish. It's like in a haze over here. Okay, and there we go, man. Isn't totally dry yet. But the masking tape is gone. This is good enough to be the inside of the cowl. Something you'll hardly ever see. More than likely, you'll never see it. And all this would be crappy typically but that will be gone when this is on there and this looks good it's got a nice kind of satin finish to it you can see here where it's still pretty glossy and hasn't dried and the sun's the lights on it but here see how it's kind of matte looking that's what it'll finish out looking like so Yesterday we painted the cow on the lower cow and we painted the outside of the upper cow. It looks awesome. It really does. Check this out. That satin black finish. So nice. You can see there's a little gray area here where you still see the weld through primer. That's fine. Once I get the outer, still see some weld through primer here and along the edges. That's fine. Once I get this permanently bonded to this, the lower cow, I'll seam seal this like they would have done and um, respray it one more time once I do the inside of the firewall and all that. As you can see, it's kind of cabbaged and stank. It needs to be done. But yeah, awesome, man. I'm super proud of that. It looks awesome. All right, so in this process, I managed to get my hands on a spot welder. And I'll plug in the thumbnail so you can check that out. Search through my channel if you want to watch that, but that's what I use to bond these two panels together. Once I figured out you really had to let that baby heat up, it worked like a charm. So let's get right to it. Let's finish this video out strong, and you can see this cow get finished out.
Okay, cows in. I've got to weld up two spots, maybe three, where I had machine screws at. Scuff it down and repaint the thing when I paint the rest of the inside of the uh, engine bay. But let's look at it. This is with the uh, dash put in there. But, uh, man, it came out great. Spot welds look good. As you guys saw before, we spot well, well, we plug welded the lower cowl to the firewall area. And so you can get a side by side difference. I know that is pretty. So you can get a side by side difference. This is what the panels come looking like. This kind of glossy, it's got some kind of kind of paint type of material on here. But as you can see in comparison, this satin black, street rod black, to me, looks more true to the original than this here. And you can see on the shock towers, that's an epoxy primer. I used to think that looked pretty good. But after spraying this, there's no comparison. This is much better. Yep, well, that basically concludes the cow session. But as you can see here... As you can see, we're gonna put these extensions on and we're gonna replace that apron, that apron, this apron, and the back one. We're gonna get these out of here. This one's been replaced before. That one was replaced. That one was replaced before too. And just all the ends are chewed up. Just not what I want on my project. And they're only $40 a piece. So it's really a no-brainer. Signing off.